Hey guys, it's the beginning of October 2021, so I would like to look back at September 2021 and talk about the five books that I read, my reading statistics, and then review those books. For a little bit of context about me, I read books before I purchase them, so all of the books in this lineup I either got from the library or I rented an audiobook. Something to note about the way that I pick books is that I try to read three books written by a woman for every one book written by a man. And that has to do with supporting women in the publishing industry. And the most practical way that I can think of doing that is by reading books written by women. The first book that I completed in September was The End of Average by Todd Rose. This is a nonfiction book. It takes a look at the concept of averages and what they mean when we're judging people's performance according to average or we're setting up systems to accommodate for an average range of human behavior. I didn't anticipate how much of this book was going to be about the education system. I thought it was going to be more about like workplace averages, which it did cover completely how employees are judged and the different frames of thought and philosophies behind that. But it mostly focused on the education system, which I thought was very interesting, but I thought this book may be more enjoyable for somebody who works in the education system. I consumed this book on audiobook and I listened to it while I was training for a half marathon. I enjoyed it. I wish that there was just like a little bit more discussion about the statistics that are used as reference. I don't know if I would recommend it. Quite a few of the stories or examples of averages holding people back have been covered by various podcast episodes. For example, I was familiar with the story of how the Air Force analyzed cockpits and realized that there was no average size person because of an episode of 99% Invisible. That entire packaged story of the 99% Invisible episode is used throughout the book. I kind of was already familiar with the concept, so it wasn't that exciting to me to hear it packaged and strung out over the course of the book. Now, if you haven't listened to that episode, it might be interesting, but I thought that 99% Invisible episode was more compelling than the book. The next book I read was Machiavelli for Women by Stacey Vanek Smith. I made a video about this. If you would like to watch and just see my full review, I'll link it here. I had a physical copy of it, I swear. It was in my hands, it was on my bookshelf, but then one of my friends told me that she is expecting a job offer, so I said, can I bring you this book? And I brought it to her, and so it's currently with her. So while I purchased this book because I liked it so much, I do not physically have it with me. I very much enjoyed this book. I thought it was full of practical advice for the workplace. My favorite chapter is about negotiating. So if you have interest in learning more about how to negotiate in the workplace, and that's mo mostly for salaries, but it could also be for responsibilities or for title changes. I recommend the book very much. It takes the principles from Machiavelli's The Prince and ties it back to workplace dynamics. I liked this book so much I bought it. It kind of speaks for itself. The next book that I read was Untamed by Glennon Doyle. This is overdue from the library. I'm making a video about it. I'm actually taking time away from that video to make this video real quick. I've made like two videos in the span that I'm working on that video. I'm tying it to Rachel Hollis because she read the book and then she like immediately started parroting the values. So it's kind of interesting. That's why I got like all these little tabby boys. This is like a new age spiritual self-help book and it was a New York Times bestseller for a reason. It's a super enjoyable read. As far as philosophy, it's like radical leftism for Christian suburban moms. And I thought it was a really pleasant read. I liked it. I'm not buying a copy, but there are several people in my life that I think that I could give it to and have them say like, oh my God, I understand you so much better now because I'm further to the left than this book is but this book could make a meaningful bridge from where they are to where I am. There's so much valuable messaging in here for if you are trying to have those hard conversations with somebody who is ideologically to the right of you. There's very valuable conversations about race and sexuality that I thought were just in incredibly well written 
and I like this book. I think that it is a totally harmless self-help book and it gets uh, Christians riled up. <laughs> so that's another benefit to it. I thought it, it's very cute. It's very pretty. It inspired some art that I've made since reading it. And if you are interested for that video, just stay tuned to my channel because it's going to be coming out in the next two weeks. Kind of a silly book that I read this month was The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And I read this book because in like the social spheres around dating on like Reddit or everywhere, like just if you use a dating app to meet a person, they're going to talk about their love languages. And I've been seeing the same person, my boyfriend, for over a year and a half now. So I'm like, away from those conversations but they still like linger in my head and especially when I like read reddit threads where people are like my boyfriend's love language is physical touch but he's so mean to me and I'm just like oh my god that doesn't mean what he thinks it means but at the same time I hadn't read the primary source document so I have feel like I've been making judgments about love languages without actually reading the primary source document and in the stories that I would read, I would always be like, they probably haven't read the primary source document. So a practice that I like to do is reading the primary source document. So I read the five love languages. It's like essentially a pamphlet. It's 232 pages long, but there's a lot of spacing and just a lot of it is very simple concepts being elaborated in kind of like redundant ways. It's a harmless book to read. I don't I don't think you actually need to read it. And there are plenty of YouTube videos that summarize it more succinctly than the book does. So watch those people, leave comments on their videos. You don't need to read this book. You definitely don't need to buy this book. There's no reason why you would sit down and spend the time reading this book when you could sum summarize it in basically like five minutes in a YouTube video. That was kind of like my silly, throwaway read of the month and it was okay. I would not read it again, nor do I actively recommend anyone read it. <laughs> My favorite book that I read this month was also the last book that I read and it is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. It did win the Women's Prize for Fiction, I believe, and I was really excited that I was able to get it from the library with such a short wait time. It took like weeks for me to get Untamed and it took like no time at all for me to get Piranesi. So this is a fiction mystery book and it's written in the style where there is a narrative and then there are excerpts that elaborate on the narrative from um, literature within the book. So there's a lot of sharing passages from the journals of the main character basically, which I think is like an exciting, storytelling method. Stephen King does it a lot, like he did it a lot in Carrie. I really enjoyed the way that this book is written. It's just a beautiful, fun book. I read it over three days. It was an absolute page turner. It was really hard for me to go to sleep because I wanted to keep reading. I love reading fiction. There was a long period in my life where I was just like, no, I'm too mature. Grown up adults don't read fiction, which is such like a morality judgment of a type of literature that's unnecessary because fiction books are just as necessary to keep your love of literature alive as nonfiction books. I'm so happy that I read it this month. I'm so happy that I got it from the library. It was a great book. I definitely recommend it. I will, I don't think I'm gonna be getting a copy because I don't think I would want to read it again, but I definitely enjoyed it and I recommend it to anyone who's looking for a pleasant fantasy mystery book. In numbers, that is 1,290 pages this month among the five books. I read three books written by women and two written by men. I only read one fiction novel. I'm good with the number of five books, but I that's probably pushing it. I think in the future I'm going to try to really manage that number, keep it around four perhaps, just because I want to make sure that I'm actually spending time with the books and making sure that I'm actually absorbing everything that they have to say. I see a lot of booktubers who are trying to read like 11 or 12 books in a month and I'm just like, when do you have time for other hobbies? Like, when are you sleeping? And I just wanna make sure that I'm reading the right amount of books for me. 
I'm also midway through several books that I started in, in September and they're just not on this list because I haven't finished them. They're not done, so they'll be on the October list. Like I said, I do have that video about Untamed coming out, and that was a 300 page book, 333 pages, and if you're interested in watching that, stay subscribed to this channel, and stay tuned for uh, future book reviews. Thanks!